Rub up your engines! Matthew Hoggins says, do you prefer skinny tires with big sidewall or more conventional shorter, wider tires? One, you want to have the wide enough tires so you don't get stuck, but you also want tall tires because you don't want low profile tires off road. They'll get flats when you hit potholes. That's the problem with cars. Years ago, I had a ton of customers in Houston start buying these BMWs with those stupid low profile tires. They kept getting flats from hitting potholes in Houston roads. And then when they found out how much those tires cost and nothing else would fit on those rims except them, some of them went out and bought different rims and tires so they get once bigger sidewalls on them, flex and the potholes wouldn't eat their tires up and break the expensive rims. DTV he says, I'm a huge Chrysler Voyager fan, Dodge Caravan. I live in the UK. I don't know why you don't like them. Compared with what I have available, crappy French and Euro stuff, is it still so bad? Well, if you're talking about crappy French and Euro stuff, maybe it's not all that bad, you know? I mean, you, you got to understand, one of the late vans that Volkswagen used to sell, it was just a rebadged Dodge Caravan. They were just buying it from Dodge and calling them Volkswagens. But let me tell you something. The Toyota Sienna vans blow them away all the time. Toyota vans. My brother-in-law went from Texas to London, talk about the UK, and he taught at the American High School there for four years. He brought a Toyota Previa van, had no problems, and he sold it to some English painter under the table, of course, because you're not supposed to sell American cars over there, and he got cash for it, and he came back without the van. I'm sure that guy, that English painter, is probably still driving that Previa van around. They are killers, and they stopped making the Previa vans, and then made the Sienna vans, and they're excellent vans, too, so if you ever tried a Toyota van, you would not think that those Chrysler vans are good vans. Yes, there's Iden said, Scotty, I'm trying to purchase a vehicle, but everyone's asking so much money. What should I do? Well, you could walk in a bicycle, get an electric motorcycle, do whatever you want. You know? Unfortunately, the price of new cars has gone up. The price of used cars follows. That's just the way that it goes. It's like Mary had a little lamb. Follows you everywhere. The price of new cars go up, so do the used ones. Everybody's asking too much money for stuff. That's just unfortunately the way that it's gone nowadays. Go to estate sales, stuff like that, bank repos, because those guys aren't pros at selling stuff, and they never know. They'll take whatever they can get. They're not professional salesmen. Or ask your neighbors, see if a kid got thrown in jail and they're selling his car, or joined the army, they're selling his car. You never know what you're going to run into. But if you go to any of the car lots, yeah, they're all sky high. They're ridiculous with their prices. I agree. Caleb O. Gonzalez Marrero says, Scotty, are Hyundai Genesis Coupes good cars? If you're looking at a Hyundai Genesis, it's an older one. I would not buy an older one. They do not hold up over time. I made a video on that where I showed a Genesis that had 140,000 miles on it and I showed how all four cams inside the engine were worn using the data from my scan tool. Then I showed them a Lexus that was the same exact year, but it had 185,000 miles, and it had almost zero wear on any of its four cams. Much better quality with the Lexus. Now, you can buy a brand new Genesis, and you might not have any problems. But then again, Tiger Woods got a free one to drive around. It almost killed him. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not impressed by them. Uh, they are fun to drive. They're fun and zippy. But when they break, and they do break when they get older, and they cost a fortune to fix, you would have wished you bought a Lexus in the first place if you wanted a luxury car. Chasey Ho says, Scotty, what do you think about junkyard alternators? Well, you like gambling? What the heck? A lot of cars in a junkyard because they got wrecked. If you see it's on a car that's all wrecked, what the heck? It was going fast. The alternator probably works pretty fine. On the other hand, if it was one that was towed in and it's not wrecked, maybe it doesn't work anymore. Now, they got to guarantee you somewhat, you know, if you're really short of funds. Let's say you go to O'Reilly or AutoZone and they want $130 for an alternator. If the junkyard will sell you one for $50 and it works and you like gambling, go right ahead. But a lot of times the junkyards, they want 50% of what a new one is, and the new ones are actually so expensive that half of that is two or three times what a remanufactured one is in a place like AutoZone or Rally, where you can get a lifetime warranty. So, depending, you want to get a good warranty? Check out what the discount auto parts stores. Do they give you a lifetime warranty? It's cheap enough? Go ahead. If not, and you got a really oddball car, and you can find one in a junkyard, and let's say the best you can find is a $500 one, and you can get one for $50 or $75 in a junkyard, go ahead if you like gambling. They got to some kind of a guarantee. Tallboy 100 says, Scotty, any thoughts on remote starters for manual transmission vehicles? Yeah, well, if you're going to get one, make sure you leave your car in neutral with the brake on whenever you 
you decide to start it remotely. Anything could be done. I mean, you can have anything set up if you want. They would have to have more electronics because to start a modern manual, you got to step on a clutch so the clutch switch is turned on so it allows the starter to engage. So you'd have to have electronics on the remote starter that would bypass all this stuff. Anything's doable if you want. I'm not a fan of remote starters anyways. I mean, if somebody gets your number, they might steal your car if they got a little thing that can grab your signal from the house. And if you add it on a car that didn't have it before, they can often have problems with not starting. I'm not a fan of putting it on myself, but anybody can do whatever they want. It's their money. Alex Oliveira says, turbo GDI engines, are they good or are they bad? Well, they're both. <laughs> <laughs> they're good because they have more horsepower. They get better gas mileage. You can get a little bitty one liter engine, put out a couple hundred horsepower. Two liter engine, you put out three, four hundred horsepower. A lot of power. But bad because all that power makes your engine wear out faster. If you have a small engine, I have a Mitsubishi out here I was working on the other day. This one had the turbocharger on it. So I put out 271. All that extra horsepower is going to wear the engine out fast. All that extra pressure of the turbo air creates more pressure inside the cylinder and the GDI injectors. Some of those are 14, 1500 PSI pressure, more pressure. A normal fuel injector, say take on a Toyota, might be 55 pounds per square inch, a lot less than you know, over a thousand PSI. All that pressure added together makes them wear out faster. They get better gas mileage, they got more power, but believe me, they will wear out faster. You're not going to get three, four, five hundred thousand miles out of the engine or the turbocharger. They claim the average turbocharger is supposed to be good for 10 years or 150,000 miles, but they generally don't warranty them that long. They say, well, that's how long they should last. Then you say, well, what's your warranty? Well, our warranty is three years or 50,000 miles. And if it breaks, you got to pay for it. So case closed on that one. MGB 013 says, are air ride suspensions more trouble than they're worth? Well, you know, it depends on what you want. Now, when I was a kid, I put them on my Ford Maverick. I put air shocks on the back because I scuba dove and I put the scuba diving tank in the trunk so I could pump it up so it didn't sink down. And friends had their tanks and so it didn't sink. And then when I, I didn't want it, I'd let the air out and they go back down to normal. And the real fancy modern ones really ride like a dream, but they cost a lot more money. They cost so much money, like on some of these Mercedes, it cost you $5,000 to change them out. And even on the Lincolns, it would cost thousands to change them out. So like with the Lincolns, when they break, a lot of guys will get like a Monroe kit where you throw throw the air ride one away and you install normal struts and shocks on it. They don't ride quite as well, but they cost a lot less. So it all depends on what you want. U2 says, hey, Scotty, is longer engine cranking caused by a weaker battery bad for your car? My battery still has about 50% of its lifespan. It's cranking longer before it starts. As nutty as it sounds, if it keeps starting, I mean, it could be your starter wearing out too. It's actually better for your car because let's say it cranks for 20 seconds before it starts. As the engine's cranking, the oil pump runs off the mechanical part. The oil pump will be pumping oil through the engine. So the oil is lubricating the engine. If you have a car that you turn the key and it boom, starts right up, some of the top of the engine isn't going to have enough oil yet and it'll have a little bit of cam wear. It's actually kind of better than that. If your car cranks for 15, 20 seconds before it starts, that's lubricating the engine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with something like that. A lot of the old diesel engines were made that way that first they crank them over for 30, 40 seconds, then they apply enough to make the engine start. So it's not actually hurting anything other than it might strand you somewhere. When it finally does go out. Crazy Human says, is a Pontiac Firebird a good car? I want one with the pop-up headlights. Now, I got friends here in Clarksville that have them. They soup them up, put out four or 500 horsepower. They're screaming cars then. And you can get them dirt cheap. If you like that particular car, it's a unique piece of Americana. You can still get parts for them. Make sure the cooling system is always working correctly, especially the cooling fans. It's got to have those cooling fans working. And if they break down, your engine will blow up. But they can be fun cars. You can get them pretty cheap if you price around. Got a gamble. To Scotty, why in the USA are there so many lemon cases other than places like Asia? Well, one, Americans whine and complain and they like to do that. And Americans, still a lot of them buy American cars that are poorly made and they fall apart. Now, other parts of the world, a lot of the laws aren't that stringent about that. I know I talked to my Canadian friends. They said, gee, we wish we had lemon laws up here like you guys do because we get stuck with these things and there's nothing we can do about it except pay with the fixes ourselves and keep a junky car because we don't have anything like you have in the United States. So some of it's laws and some of it is Americans whine like mad. And the other thing is, like I said, if they buy American cars, which aren't that well made, I don't know what goes on in Italy. They make those Fiats and stuff, horrible cars, and they love to whine there. So who knows? Maybe the law just doesn't let them sue it or they'd all have to send their cars back. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody in Italy, give me some feedback. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.